What's up machine freaks? I hope everybody's feeling fly AF today. If you're not, well sit back, watch me do me while you do you. Hopefully we can get a smile on your face, make you feel a little bit better today. Today we are going to continue to work on the Kodiak. We're gonna try to get it running today. I'm going to get the oil filter as we speak. Then I have to get some fuel for the truck because the D-Max is a thirsty, thirsty girl and she likes to drink a lot. She's a dieselholic. I fell off the brat board, my motorized ripstick I built. I guess from now on I should be wearing gloves. I got the Kodiak topped off with engine oil. As you guys are aware, changing your oil isn't that complicated, but sometimes it can be a nightmare and sometimes it can be a dream. You guys know what I'm saying. You have probably been there and done that. Now I want to start this machine up. The only thing is, is I don't have the rest of the exhaust on. The rest of it's sitting on the ground over here. I don't want to put it on just yet. I want to kind of see how loud it is before I put the muffler on. Because to tell you the truth, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of fire and hear a little bit of power. So I'm going to hold off on that. And if it just becomes too loud, I'll put the rest of the muffler on. But the kid in me just wants to let this thing rip. I want to see what this fuel smells like before I go ahead and put it in this thing. Doesn't stink too bad, but I think it's safer to just go ahead and dispose of this stuff. I got all the fuel out. Before I continue, I wanna go ahead and check if this petcock or the fuel shutoff works. So what I'm gonna do is take off my vice grips. That should be reserved. That should be off. That should be on, so I'm going to test off. I have the fuel shut off on on, and the stream that's coming out is terrible. So that's telling me that we have a clog, and it's probably this fuel filter here. That's flowing a lot better. Now I'll put the fuel filter back on, see if it flows any better, I don't know. I guess that did it. The fuel filter, yeah, it, it did look good, so that's why I wanted to make sure. So the petcock needs to be replaced. That's not a problem, but for now, we're gonna continue working on this thing because we don't wanna, we don't wanna start investing money into this machine and find out that it's just a parts machine. If I go ahead and work on the critical things and make sure that she's gonna be a machine and not just a parts machine, then we can buy the smaller parts and the less important parts. Kinda like this petcock. If fuel flows into the carburetor and gets the engine to run, I'll be a happy camper. If the fuel goes into the carburetor and the engine doesn't run, I won't be a very happy camper. Happy camper! I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here. I'm hoping that the engine turns over. They do have an aftermarket starter button which when I bought the machine it worked, and then after I brought it home it didn't. So I'm hoping it'll work once I hook it up. All I can do at this point is hope and pray. If it doesn't work, that's one more thing I have to fix. I tell you what, when I fell off my brat board, I screwed up my freaking wrist. He said that was the only problem with this machine. Trust me dude, there's way more problems than that. 
I, I just like the noise of this thing. I love when you buy a tool set and the tool company goes out of its way to make a nice organized piece of equipment for you so that you can put your sockets and your ratchets all together in a nice organized fashion and yet we still forget to put the sockets away and then we're looking for them. I don't think it could get any easier. Human error, that's all I can say. Now when I took this rear muffler mount off, I didn't have to put a wrench on this nut. It came right off, but now that I'm trying to put it back on, it doesn't like me. But since it's all rusty and crusty, thanks to water and salt and the atmosphere, got it. We heard the before, now for the after. I let the exhaust smoke escape my garage before I go ahead and close the overhead door back down. I did a very good job re-welding the frame together. As you guys know from my previous video, this is a trunk that I actually put in here in place of the original frame and it and it fits so perfectly it's not even funny. Like you can't even see a, a gap right there, it's so tight, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. And we also bent this Y a little bit when we tweaked this whole rear piece. We did a fine job. That's worth a handicap thumbs up to me. I'm just trying to go through the list in my head. I'm trying to put the most important things at the top that I want to address first. And it seems like this caliper is up next. I still can't get over how well it starts. Yeah, it runs. It, it runs better than the Grizzly did, and the Grizzly was supposedly a 2014. This one's a 2002. 12 years older. The issue at hand is this does not belong here. That booger is no good at all. I think what was supposed to happen was the caliper was just supposed to slide down and go into this hole right here. But for some reason they didn't put it in there. Just another fun thing to add to the to-do list. The to-do list can be a wonderful thing or it can be a huge pain in the ass. I'm sure you're well aware of that. Whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, or your mother, the list can get pretty hairy or they can get exhilarating. Yeah! This four-wheeler continues to amaze me in that it's a total piece of sh I'm not kidding you, it's, it's a disgusting thing. I mean, granted it won't be a disgusting thing after I get my hands on it, but the fact is, they took this caliper, I Google imaged a back caliper, it was difficult to find, and luckily I did find one. Because if I didn't, I'd start hacking this apart and trying to figure out how the hell it went on there. But the image shows that this line should go up here. But there's no way that I can turn this caliper in any direction to make it so that that stays there while the caliper does its job and rides this disc. So I'm like, hey, maybe uh, they harvest a caliper off the front. And sure enough, they did. That's where the caliper's supposed to go. So that back one is actually a front one. Luckily, it's got its other front caliper, which is difficult to see right now, but it is there. So I have to order a new rear one, and then hopefully harvest this one. Which doesn't look like it should be too big of a problem, but still, it is an issue. I also don't think that this is the proper cap for that coolant reservoir. This whole time, I couldn't find this one bolt I finally found it, and I hope I can finally get it out. 
I want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in to 3D Machines today and spending a little bit of your day with me. I spent just about most of my day with you guys. Can you guys dig my hat? I think my girlfriend got it for me two Christmases ago. I dig it. It's my favorite color purple and it's got my favorite YouTuber on it, 3D Machines. I got one question for you guys before I leave. Leave your answer in the comment section below. The question is, if 3D Machines built and manufactured four-wheelers, would you buy them? Now before answering that question, ours would be diesels and it'd be made in the USA. Now if you're not a USA citizen or you're not in the USA, you probably don't care. But the fact is, Jack, I might be working on it myself. If that were the case, if 3D machines touched every four-wheeler they were made in the USA and they were diesel powered, would you buy one? We might even be turbo too. Leave your comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to smash the hell out of the like button. Until tomorrow, 3D machines out. Ooh, those Christmas lights are pretty. Ah, that's why I absolutely hate Allen head bolts. They are the worst. If you've been there and done that, you agree. If not, just take my word for it.